This USFL Week Nine picks and college baseball edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is brought to you by Edge Boost. Edge Boost enables you to double your bet with no interest. Go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash edge to get started today. This is Clay Harbor. You're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. Everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, second the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Cram? Dog. Sean, who wore it better, Jalen Rose or Stephen A. Smith? Oh yes, both white, white to Miami. Both uh rocking the white jackets in Miami. Ridiculous. Joining us here, we will talk USFL Week Nine picks and college baseball. We're going to be joined by Noah from the College Baseball Experience. You know him, Colby Dan, aka the Dantabase, aka Pick Dundee. What's up, Colby? Good eye, mate. How you doing? <laughs> that wasn't the level you brought your sound check. <laughs> no, no. Colby's all over the map. Ah, with he always levels. does that. Yeah. Uh, I, I get excited, guys. Nuggets did get the win in game three. I, I, I had the heat, but I, I wasn't in love with it because I did. What I was more confident about was. The loser of game three is going to win game four. So we'll get to that when we do the game four NBA. Picks, Sean, you forgot the first question. You're supposed to ask Colby all summer long. I know it's not the summer yet. How many episodes mm. have you re- already recorded for the college experience team previews? Uh, we are already six. Oh in. my God. Six down. June Six se- it's down fucking June seventh. June 127 left. You know, there's a lot of critiques of Colby picks overs for every single team. He's at a he's at a steady three and three right now. It was two and three, but I found an <laughs> over I like. I'm really uh, excited and, uh, about. And, and to uh to hold you over until till uh Monday morning when that first episode will drop. Colby just re- don't worry. Colby just recorded the week ten preview. Week ten college football <laughs> preview and the, the, the preview, college baseball experience before that. Yeah, the, we got it going. The preview to the preview. <laughs> to be clear, because it's not like you're not going to do a, a week ten college football preview when week ten happens. It's yeah. just a, it's just a you know get your uh, a little tickle your. Feathers. Seems like Sean doesn't like so much football. Yeah, I mean, no, we do, I we, love football. Right? We do the draft too. We talk. You know, not only oh. are we previewing. We're drafting the games as the, the top thirty games. We talk about the history, just everything that is college football. So go listen to that, Ryan. Uh, that was a great plug. Ryan has been doing uh, putting in off season work, trolling Niners fans on social <sighs> media. Easy in the YouTube chat pointing out you should change your name to the Forty ers worst enemy. Again, Ryan trolling the Niners fan to me is just so funny because he is the one talking about Sam Darnold, dark horse MVP well, candidate. Am I a troll? Like, do I need to look I mean, in the mirror? How how heated have these arguments got? Like, have you brought up OJ Simpson was once a 49er? I, Colby, you you <laughs> you sit in an office with me. How often do I get heated about anything? My my responses have been orderly. It's true. And you would call dry, me every dry and, sar- go yeah. at dry and sarcastic. Yeah. I, I think that's generally what I'm doing. Sharing here. that sharing that Sam Darnold video was clearly a troll. I enjoyed it, but yeah, you you're, you're doing a little troll stuff there. And I, again, I enjoyed it. Sean, do I not post videos of all different players from all different teams? I try. I'm trying to be positive. Mm. I guess it's I just the, noticed I how quick the, Sam Darnold's the, release looked the, the, relative the, to another NFL quarterback I named mean, Trey when, Lance. When when Niners fans were sharing alternate screenshots <laughs> of an OTA training video, yeah, which Kramer critiqued him, that's when you know football is king. I didn't realize yeah. oh, that yeah. the Niners had such a passionate fan base. Like I knew they were all right. Like, <laughs> I, I, it's like not it like is. UCLA or something. It, well, like, it's weird. Yeah. I don't know if they have a passionate fan base, no. but Trey Lance has a passionate. <laughs> Fan base. It's it's very the, weird. Those North Dakota fans that are probably closet Niner fans now. Is that what you're saying? Kramer, if you if you shared a video and just said the Niners suck, if you shared that same video, I don't think no. it would have gotten nearly no. the this attention so- it got online. It, it it's because you're attacking in particular Trey Lance. The Can uh, I tell you when I saw that alleged squirter was 
trending earlier today. I thought I thought that was related to Trey, at, Trey Lance's at, slow it, release. Disgusting act. Oh, uh, I mean, if squirter it gets out pretty quick. I, Trey Lance probably wishes he was a squirter. I of did course. have a banger of a joke about about the squirter. I mean, Zion. Z- we could we could do an entire episode about Zion well, Williamson and what he's dealing with. Zion's baby. I'm surprised he had sex. I thought he might get injured. Oh yeah, you got to watch out. You know Zion's I mean? baby mama. Yeah, his mom's like, don't have sex. You might get injured. And the Phoenix Suns. Loving like the big Zion's release. Through the hourglass. <laughs> Loving the big so release. So are the days of our league. <laughs> oh. You thought just because Zion wasn't playing basketball that he wouldn't be involved in some off the court antics ba, ba, ba. from baby mamas to alleged baby mamas to uh, allegedly uh, there's a, there's a woman who was got pregnant. There's a. <laughs> It seemed like he was with two chicks, um, and uh, he's really, Zion. really just a tough. I mean, he's a, Zion, Zion being Zion. Ryan, we finally got the answer because Zion, even though he was cleared by trainers, he said he wasn't capable yet of doing Zion things. It appears he is capable of doing Zion things. He's, he's like one of those guys who will get <laughs> penetration. He's like the Tin Man. He just needed his lubrication. <laughs> Hey, shout out. We got Jason Campbell in the chat. Oh, who's this? One of your people? Jason Campbell, the former Redskins quarterback. Oh, shout out to Jason Campbell. Yeah, he's there as Black Kirk Cousins. Oh, you see him? <laughs> it's actually that is an allu- that's uh that's what someone insulted uh yeah, Dak. Dak Prescott. Rain. They called him Jason Campbell? Yeah. No. No, 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 no. they called him the uh, Black Kirk Cousins. Because oh, you're both oh, calling okay. him mediocre and corny at the same time. Oh. Oh, I, wasn't, I wasn't even trying to call him corny. I was just uh, trying to say like, if you're a black, all right. So if you're limited, a black, if you're a cool black dude and you get called Kirk cousins, is there a lower insult? <laughs> that's like, true. I, that's real, true. real quick. Just to, uh, <laughs> to tie the bow on the Zion thing. What so Zion uh, announced that he had gotten a, a woman pregnant. And then this uh, seems like adult film star still unclear tweeted out. I warned you about trapping type nope. hoes, Zion, and you didn't listen to me. Uh, the, the, um, you put my life in danger, effing all these hoes, raw dog. <laughs> I I was with you last week in New Orleans, and you couldn't tell me you had a random thought pregnant. All I've done for you, better pray I'm not pregnant too, because I'm definitely late. Couple couple. Kids. Then he then he, she said something about I let you spit in my mouth. Yeah. It was it was Be- really. Wait, crazy. you said that better better pray. Disgusting act. Better pray that I'm not pregnant too. Is that one of her movies? <laughs> oh wow! That's a sequel to Better, Better, uh, Better Pray I'm Not Pregnant. Sean, one. I, the I, original sequel's never as good. Yeah. K- K- it's only I would love for Coach K to comment on the science. Yeah. Well, and Easy is confirming. <laughs> He's gardening. Easy in the chat has confirmed she is an adult film star. Okay. Oh man. What? What? Yeah. What's her specialty? I mean, feel <laughs> at any point, feel free to just drop that in the chat. I I would say this. Key takeaways here. A uh, one, pat, like m- more athletes being really, really stupid. So what was the correct draft pick? Mm. Not John Morant. Not Z- seems like Zion <laughs> might have some <laughs> that problems. That's hilarious. Back. Well, it makes you wonder. Oh, yeah. What did he slip and bust his shoe in college because he was already in, deep into the squirting situation? <laughs> had a had a sideline. That I, is a disgusting. This is crazy. Act. How dumb can you be? How dumb can you be? Everyone's got social media now. You yeah. can't hide stuff. When yeah. we were in high school, you could drive a town over and be fucking hidden. No one no <laughs> knew you. Uh, it, was a, it was a better world then, but you could be right? anonymous, no problem. You could just uh, you know get your car, they just, didn't, they just didn't drive have, west. They, I, didn't, they didn't have read receipts on Nokia cell phones. I was about to say, what did I tell you guys yesterday? I, I missed that era and I wasn't old enough really where yeah. the pagers were in. I missed oh, pagers. Yeah. I wanted to be a part of the what pager. year did you graduate high school? Oh, oh, so you're young, you're younger one? than me too. That's crazy. Yeah, so. I mean, I, this is where I, you blow people's minds. You just explain. Imagine Vegas if you couldn't contact people at all times. That's like, well, that's fantastic. But but how did it even work? How'd you meet up, dude? I'm telling Shit you, shit goes crazy in Vegas. A, we need a time machine. <laughs> we need a time. <laughs> machine. Let's go back. It was a simpler time. All right, let's get to it. Talk a little spring football while we're doing that. Of course, shout out to Edge Boost. That's right, double your bet with zero percent interest. I mean, imagine, imagine if you played my USFL Week Eight picks last week. Every instead of getting four bets right against the spread, you would have gotten eight. 
because you're double up your chance to win. That's right. Oh man, edge boost makes it so easy. And don't worry, this isn't some payday loan operation. This isn't some loan shark. If anything, I'm considering them loan dolphins. They bring you, eh, they, they come, they hang out with you, they party. Edge boost, easy to use, easy to set up. And I, oh, I'm going to get in over my head. No, edge boost can be part of a responsible gambling plan. You can set up daily, weekly, monthly limits across all your betting accounts in one place and take advantage of the fact that edge boost lets you double down on your bet with zero interest zero support SGPN and grow your bankroll by going to sports gambling podcast.com slash edge to sign up today. That's sports gambling podcast.com slash edge plus 21 years or older problem gambling call 1-800 gambler. Sean, you know, Chuck Fusina was the quarterback of the Philadelphia stars and he, he uh, in the eighties in the USFL, he won two championships and, and, and played for a third. People thought he was the USFL guy, but I think it might be Sean Sack no. and the Money Green. I mean, twenty-two what and ten. Fuck is this? Twenty-two and ten <laughs> against the spread. I, I I'm not in the office for a day, and you guys are pre-producing these fluff bits. <laughs> all right, Jesus here we go. Christ. Here we go. USFL Week Eight triple lock salute. Okay. We all hit our locks. Oh, now all right, that's cool. I'll I'll join you. Kramer went three and one, hitting oh. his lock and his dog, oh. the Memphis Showboats. Wow. What? Uh, Kramer, uh, Colby, and I both uh, barely missed out on our Pittsburgh Maulers. Or no, I had the Maulers money line, lost by a point. That was unfortunate. They did cover the spread. Uh, Colby had the Panthers also hanging around in that game against the Breakers. Oh man. I mean, what? What's tough wrong? breaks? Uh, Those northern Panthers. teams that are not the <laughs> Philadelphia Stars. It's a hard watch because it's like. Th- Maulers should have beat the gamblers. They should have won outright. The the like these teams are knocking on the door. Like that the I feel like Well, yeah, and and just kind of quick recap here. Obviously, every team right now is still alive in the playoffs. It's a 10 week season. We're in week nine. Every team has a shot at the playoffs, including the two and six Maulers, (laughs) the two and six generals, because the Panthers in their division are three and five and the Maulers no. played the Panthers this week. Well, even, even the stars who are the one seed haven't clinched yet. No, because, you're right. That's yeah. yeah. Because they could, they could uh, lose week nine and week 10. <laughs> and then I think if the other I, teams, I, I, I got the scenarios here, hang on. So look, <laughs> if the stars win, they're in. All right. And we know the stars, they're wow. like a blue blood in, in the U S blue, uh, blue blob. There we go. Uh, the, the Michigan Panthers, if they win on Saturday and if the stars win on Sunday, then Michigan is clinched. Uh, then you have, uh, if the stallions win they're in. but here's an interesting thing. If the stallions lose the ga- they're playing the, the gamblers this weekend, the gamblers have already beat them. So they would then have the tiebreaker on the stallions, a huge, uh, every game's huge. This, this is fantastic football in late June or mid June, whatever the hell it is. Uh, so they, they clint, how, how do they clinch? Cause they have, they would have the tiebreaker over, over the gent, the general, which team were you talking about? The Panthers. Yes. Sorry. Coming back to your pan Panthers win and they clinch. Are you sure? No, no, no. They need the stars to win too. Okay. So the star, yes, 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 yes. yes, So (laughs) I missed that part. Yeah. It is. It is wild. And fun fact: um, if you're if you're not in the Google sheet, like probably all of you, uh, hilariously, Sean's abbreviation for New Orleans, the New Orleans Breakers, is (laughs) knob. Over and Biz, to your point about the trainer, the stick, he's got the biggest knob in the league. So if you're the trainer, it's pretty easy to pick out what his stick looks like on the stick rack because his knob is so huge. Uh, we it's massive ma- knob. His knob is so huge; might have to be a drop. I'll, <laughs> let me, I'll pin this for later. Uh, yeah, I mean, all right. So, I, I, and our- I, I, I had bragged previously about getting the Maulers at twenty-two to one. <laughs> I realize they're twenty-five to one uh, now, but I still like it. I, I, I do like them as a future <laughs> because, again, they, they win these next two games; they're in the playoffs. That, uh, yeah, it comes twenty-five down. to one is crazy. It's, it's which they are the they are the uh, they are the complete outsider. But all they have to do is win these next two games. And even you look at the spread, they're only getting one and a half points. So it's not like it's even that crazy. Yeah. And I, they have a defense and they have a kick return game, which can really okay. in these games that are close your ears, Colby, kind of a shit <laughs> show at times. No, that's just the North. Oh, it's just the North. <laughs> it's like uh, a, it's, it's kind it's like of a, a shit <laughs> show. So if you have a defense, this is insane. Now again, we're, it's unclear what still what a home and road game is, but the North is oh. two. 
and uh, fourteen at home as a division. How is that possible? They play each other. Yeah, and and you gotta wonder if these games might get moved because of the uh, the the CFL kicking off and these Canadian wildfires. See, you oh. see what happens. The CFL kicks off tomorrow night, and so all of a sudden, these fires start popping out. <laughs> that, these fans are going wild. Are they burning couches up there? Is that what you're suggesting? Yeah, man, it's like Morgantown, but for uh, the whole country. Are where are the games being played? Because I I might have. They're the, all outdoors this week. That's what I'm saying. Like it's a it, it's interesting. We got Canton, Ohio, Birmingham, Alabama. Is, are these accurate? Yes. All right, we fact checked them. I just I don't think the smoke's made it down to Birmingham. Wait, I think one's Memphis. I think the second one yeah. is Memphis. Yeah. Second one is Memphis. All right. Pretty sure. All right, let's get to the games, Kramer. Uh, Michigan, the Panth well, so uh, what I was going to say is that so basically the ge- Generals and the Maulers, you can and the Panthers all so Panthers are 10 to 1 Generals are twelve to one, and <laughs> Maulers are twenty five to one. Mauler, the generals, one of these teams will be in the playoffs. The the Generals are like at plus three hundred at one point, weren't they? Yeah, <laughs> Ryan, you're very fortunate. Um, Why? Or I'd say I'll I'll say I'll be more positive. You are very sharp to decide to go all in on a Generals game earlier yeah. in the season oh, because this good. is a much different Generals I, team. We I see. mean, I put a very large bet. Th- this team is is. Uh, yeah, I mean, no, but they can still win it all. Laletta cheese. He, you got it. No, it, the pro cop played most of the game. They started Laletta and they went to pro no, cop. Pro cop looks stink. good, man. Like what? Like I get it. He threw Do, one terrible. Well, yeah, pass we'll, we'll get to zone. that. All right. Michigan taking on uh, the Pittsburgh Maulers. Sean's Pittsburgh Maulers. Yeah. Big Pittsburgh guy lately. T- like I said, both of these long shots to win the, the championship. Michigan minus one and a half minus one twenty on the money line. Pit- Pittsburgh plus 100. 41 is the total. I, I mean, you have to pick up a little Pittsburgh future, right? Well, in 25 and, to there's eight teams and, and yes, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> and specifically for this matchup, I really like the Maulers. The Maulers uh, beat them the last time they played. They, f- they forced four turnovers against the Panthers and uh, interesting nugget. 22% of the Panthers rush attempts have gone for negative yards. It, the Maulers have a great defense, or at least a good defense, USFL standards. But they are they are suspect to the running game, and that's kind of how they lost uh, the game last week. They just they if you have a dominant running back, you can really kind of take down the Maulers and their quarterback Troy Williams, a rare bright spot for their offense. Uh, Two hundred forty three yards, three touchdowns, and an interception the last time they played against the Panthers. So I think there's some matchups they can take advantage of. I think they can win the turnover battle. And again, their their special teams and kick return game keep them in games. I'm all over the Pittsburgh Maulers. Let's go. They drive me crazy though, dude. And they this are, is one of the yes. North teams that drive me crazy. So, okay, uh, Ray Horton played college ball in the seventies. It was played for the Cincinnati Bengals and the and the Dallas Cowboys, and you know, legendary or you know, played in a great era of co- of college and pro football. He's but about to say something mean. What well, he drives me crazy. First <laughs> off, you got to go for some of these fourth and inches, and then. Madre London had eight, the, right, eight. How how conservative the play calling has been in the USFL <laughs> is insane. Are you worried the Pittsburgh Mauler <laughs> press is going to come at you for your job? Like you have nothing to you're lose. Not, you're not even everything in to get. Imagine yeah. imagine if there was a USFL coach who just went for every fourth down and it would at the very least make like some news but in Horton, the sports world. Horton is Co- like comically, all of them, comically but he is like over the top and yeah. then for some reason, so Madre London, I even said last year when they had Kirby Wilson, I was like, he's not bad at a running at running back. He had eight rushes for forty one yards, over five yards of carry, Sean. Uh, Sounds and, nice. Yeah. But for some stupid reason, they have these two white stiff running backs. Oh, wow. and, and he's going back <laughs> oh. to the John Riggins era. Garrett Groshek, eleven rushes, twenty two yards, two yards a rush. Uh, you go back the the week before, he had one point one yards a rush. Whoa. Why are they Madre London? Give the guy the ball. Give the guy the ball. Look, I'm on the Maulers too, but they, I'm ready they drive to, me crazy. I'm ready to proclaim USFL very, very far behind the XFL on the cards right now. Mm, really? I, I not not sure how they can close their season out and be the superior spring league. I think they're way better. Oh, what are you way talking better. about? As this, far as like the teams, the league, teams are way better. Gross. Yeah. No. Well, if only there was some way to find out. If only <laughs> there was a way to have the XFL play the USFL. The DJ Bowl. Let's go. We're, get and that you just going, alternate. Sean. I mean, again, 
Just just combine them and have Sean, one awesome league. Did you see what happened with the live tour thing? Yeah. Let's just get get a big bag. Are we gonna are we Let's gonna get leave? a big bag? Go to both the leagues. <laughs> yeah. Figure it out. I we like got- them independent. I like to see America at its <laughs> finest when they're competing. Colby sounds like the DOJ. You know what I mean? I mean, we can probably probably uh, borrow the Glendale Community College football field. It's a nice turf field. Go down to for the XFL or just for the championship. That that Vegas stadium for the championship. They can't can't afford the flight side. All right, so I'm on Pittsburgh along (laughs) with you guys. What's your take on this round? Oh, I I because I'm gonna bet the 25 to one long (laughs) shot. Wait, honestly, they're all they're they're only a one and a half point dog. So in a game they need to win to get in the play. So a 25 to one is basically saying I'm parlaying them to win four straight games. Colby, if they win both games, what else needs to happen for them? For because, Pittsburgh? Uh, y- yeah, because they already won one of their two wins is against the Panthers. I actually so they think would have the tiebreaker against the Panthers. What else do they need to have? I think happen? if Philadelphia beats New Jersey, because Yeah, I guess yeah. generals have to lose one of their next two, right? Yeah. Okay. But um yeah, I mean, I feel like Pittsburgh could still because Pittsburgh beat New Jersey early this year. I don't know how that All tiebreaker right. would work out for them, but they, so this yeah. this week they're even money. Let's just assume they're plus one fifty, plus one fifty, and then plus two hundred rest of the way. Mm. That would still result in a seventeen seventy five payout. So twenty five to one, Sean, very juicy and good odds. Bet way better than the mechanical. So we should all get down on that show bet maybe. New Orleans, the Breakers, the Knobs. Four to one to win the championship, uh, looking electric. Where th- this? So this one's in Memphis, Tennessee, noon on Saturday. Memphis is a pick minus one ten each way here. Forty three and a half is the total. The showboats are six to one. Showboats are interesting. I mean, you know, they started out zero and three, gotten hot, won five in a row, but. Uh, third in the league as far as most passing uh, yards per game, which is funny. It's one ninety six. No, kind of a kind of an indictment on the quarterback. They play the less league. minutes, right? <laughs> this they uh, use a smaller ball. It's like women's <laughs> basketball. Whoa, Sean, which I'm also a fan of. Yeah, this team, <laughs> I still think they're not that good. But oh. even last year they diluted their. Or this last team, week, you have to clarify. Memphis, they okay. they have the biggest win streak in, in the USFL. And they didn't look great. I thought the generals shot themselves in the foot more than the Memphis won the game, but Hey, somehow they keep winning. I think their offense sucks. I think Carnell Lake's mm. a great defensive coordinator. And I think their special teams has been pretty damn good. Um, I, I, give me new Orleans. I just trust their, their talent more. I think they're the more talented team. If they just don't turn the ball over, which I know McLeod Bethel Thompson has, oh, has struggled been, with that. Know, he's, he's, yeah. uh, he, he's related to Danucci here. No, I mean breakers. I, I kind of, I, I don't know if I would have breakers or stallions right now as the best team in the league. And man, they, they it's weird. Breakers started out hot. They lost three in a row, nice bounce back win, but it still felt like they kind of, they didn't really run away with the game as much as I, I think they were up. They were up what 21, nothing like I they, think something like that. Right? They really, yeah they really should have put away uh, a, an inferior Panthers team and they let them hang around. I am. I, and I've lobbied that they should, the, they should <laughs> save a buck and actually have the new Orleans breakers roster and wherever they play oh, this at in the future, actually take a showboat up the Mississippi river. <laughs> that would be boat. Great. <laughs> I, you know, I, I we, do we like, haven't seen football on a boat. Yeah. Some, just uh, basketball. We've uh, done basketball, some DJ nation, some high, <laughs> high stakes poker on the way. Bethel Thompson's interesting because he's he's com- he completed seventy three and a half percent of his passes, but he still threw two picks. It's it's weird. He he has an efficiency. Fun fact, I'm trolling around uh, DK over here, and I yeah. come across in the USFL odds section. I come out come across an XFL player special where they proceed to list some player props for the for game. XFL or for US- the USFL. Oh, okay. And Bethel Thompson to go for 300 yards and three touchdowns is five to one. Mm. I mean, you see what he did last week. He actually, I, what did he throw for last week? I feel like he, I feel like he threw for over 300, which is almost unheard of in these leagues. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's that happens. Like, what? What did he do? Well, let, let me see. Uh, He's, he is leading the league in 328 uh, passing yards, 2118. Two. Ooh, so but, he was close last yeah. week against the Panthers. That ground game though, Wes Hills has been they uh, non existent the past couple of weeks, but I still All think right, New Orleans is anyway. the better team. Kramer, what are you doing? Uh well 
I, I would, I was going to wait for you to pick so I could just copy your pick. But if you insist on going first, do we, should we play that prop? It's not that bad. Five to one. I mean, the sh- but uh, Sh- Carno Lake's defense has been pretty nasty though. Yeah. I'm going, I'm going New Orleans just cause yeah, of the I'm uh, with Colby. You're with Colby on specifically. I'm with Colby. I was going to copy Colby before you copied. Colby. Okay. No, so cause I, I do you. think, I do think New Orleans, it, they are the better team. I think Memphis is due for some regression here. So, and just for, like quick summary, we already highlighted how three teams have uh, double digit odds in the North. Uh, let's remember now the stallions plus two fifty, the uh, breakers, the, sorry, the showboats plus uh, 600, the breakers plus 400 all in the same division. One of them is going to miss the playoffs. And oh, by the way, the gamblers are five. Yeah, I don't think so. There's, I don't think there's. How does that work? I'll we, be honest. We gotta just bet all three teams <laughs> for the North again. Yes, I, I, I don't think we just gotta do that. I think you could bet all four teams in the North, oh, and, no, it, and you end bet. up. Well, you're gonna get. You guarantee yourself. <laughs> All right, let's let's just try. Uh, don't take Jersey because I can't trust that Mike Riley's not going to switch quarterback. Yeah, take the to? other three. They just switch quarterbacks too much. They ruin the chemistry of the f- of the team. So Go let's Kobe's say let's, like, say, let's say we took like these people protesting down at the schools. It drives me crazy. I'm like Pro Cop looked like a baller last week. I'm sitting there like, man, he looks like the kid from Birmingham. That's something uh, me and me and Nick noticed is that look at look at the teams in the playoffs right yeah. now. If the season ended today, <laughs> Case Cookus. Has been the starter all year long. Sure, he's, right? he's the best quarterback in the league. Right, uh, Alex Magoo has been the starter since week one. They yep. haven't, they haven't th- yeah, they haven't, you know, m- messed with that. And then uh, Cole Kelly, I think, since week two. So they have stayed at the only team, Michigan, which Josh Love started most of the games. They're the most consistent teams with starting their quarterbacks. New Orleans is also in the mix. They've started the, the McLeod Bethel Thompson the whole year. It's the teams that keep flop switching around on the, these quarterbacks every possession that are losing. I feel like you just got to uh, my opposite of my original thought of just take the favorites, just take the dog. All right, moving along <laughs> to Sunday, eleven a.m. That was not a great strategy <laughs> on the West Coast. Well, I turned it around three and one last week, Sean. Oh, as you no. reminded the audience, I 11, did. Eleven a.m. So te- well, yeah, you know, betting sport. is a team sport. Yeah, right? Team sport. 11 a.m. on that we learned that from Shaq, our former coworker. 11 a.m. on the West Coast, back to Memphis again. They're doing the the, the location split across two days. I they they are really stupid if they're strapped for cash. Birmingham, the Stallions, they're laying three and a half here. Favorites to win it all, at plus two fifty. Gamblers plus five fifty to win it all. They're plus one fifty in this spot. Minus one seventy five for the Stallions. Forty five and a half is the total. Uh, I mean. Wouldn't this be just amazing chaos? So give us the playoff. I mean, so basically, if Houston wins and the Stallions lose, do the Stallions have a chance to drop all? Yes, they have a chance to drop all the way out of the playoffs. Uh, I mean, this is this is mind bending. That's why you can't. Yeah. How do you bet any of these (laughs) South teams on the futures? You can't. You can't. I kind of like the Gamblers in this spot. I do too. They beat them the first time. Yeah, but that's a it's a revenge spot for the Stallions. And Colby, you printed it. You pointed it out. It's a home game though for Houston. In Memphis, <laughs> yeah. At least they're not in Birmingham, where the home crowd is. Yeah. Um. Uh. Magoo has just been so good. He's a baller. He he's an NFL quarterback, dude. I really? watch him and Whoa. I say, this guy. He set the modern USFL record for passing touchdown sixteen and total touchdowns twenty. I, I I just can't go against him. Mark Thompson is a beast. The kid just has a nose for the end zone. Seventy eight yards, sixteen carries, uh, three touchdowns. I. I I, you know, again, I'm going kind of back and forth between the stallions and, um, and breakers maybe there for the best teams right now. Again, it doesn't really matter if you're the best team, but I like the stallions here. I like the idea of laying three and a half. This feels like a lot like the three and a half point spread. We had to lay last week for the breakers to take down the Panthers where the, the stallions are going to feel kind of in control of the game. Uh, gamblers are going to have a couple big plays and you're like, shit, what did I do? And then Birmingham pulls it out. So I, I'm going to take the stallions here laying the three and a half. Uh, All right. Well, I mean, I already told you, I like the gamblers. Yeah. Here. I think more than a field goal, I got to go with Mark Thompson. Right. And I think they're Chaos, playing for their baby. lives. If they lose, you know, like Birmingham, if they lose, they're still there's, they can still get in Houston. I think this is a pretty pivotal desperation. Yeah, spot. I think they're a little bit more desperate, but both teams certainly there. Give me the anything more than a field goal. Who, G- where, where did Alex Magoo go to college? FIU, buddy. The airport. Yeah. Where, all right, now this is for Sean. Who drafted him? 
who drafted Alex Magoo. I'm going to go Jeff Fisher. Pete Carroll. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's close. But yeah, I mean, he, to, to Colby's point, played for the Seahawks, uh, Jags, Texans, and Seahawks again. No, I, he's good. I want to like say. Actually, yeah. yeah, he yeah. he could. I mean, again, yeah. he's better than he, some of the scrubs. He got. only made the active roster for the Texans in 2019, 2020. Is that, so. is that the year it all went down for Deshaun? Or what was oh, what year you, was that? that? You know what? We got to get Magoo on the podcast and ask him <laughs> about the uh, massage practices of uh, one Deshaun Watson. <laughs> You have to know when to call. He was in that quarterback Richard, room. Richard Gersberger checking in saying, I need you guys to help me appreciate this sport. Still having trouble. The sport is football, the greatest sport of all time. Now the league you could have some quibbles with, but again, it's football they can watch on the weekend and bet on. You again, hear, hear and, and you can be 22 and a 10 against the spread. If you were taking my picks, you want a spicy take from, from me? Sure. NBA finals more interested than USFL right now. Oh my mm. God. Even oh though they're playing God. in the dome, right? That's, this is a soccer guy. <laughs> well, Ryan we do did, have the Champions League. Ryan final. did talk a ton of soccer with Ryan Connor, friend <laughs> yeah. of the program, comedian. I, I have to. I got to carry the weight. No one else is doing it. He just wants <laughs> I to talk. I caught like two minutes of that. I caught like two minutes of that. I was bored. I was like, okay. <laughs> well, Ryan he goes deep, him. and I and I happen to have act, you know God's eyes constantly watching stuff. So I watched the uh, Concacaf <laughs> <laughs> Champions League final, and you guys were watching a replay <laughs> of. Canadian League soccer no, no, it was on live. TV. It was five. Live. He was confused because okay. it wasn't MLS. It was a, it was a like Canadian Montreal League. Montreal versus uh, Vancouver. Victoria. The Whitewater. <laughs> Come on, Sean. All right. Move. Saying uh, Saskatchewan I, was in there somewhere. I'm all in on this NBA Finals right now. Could okay. be that I'm on a heater in basketball, but yeah. also could be that I'm all in on the uh, NBA right now. Philly, the Stars taking on the NJGs. Not even going to say their full name. Mm. Haven't heard it. 12 to 1, disgusting to win it all. Philly, Sean, your stars, as you mentioned, they are the favorite in the North, but they are the fourth favorite overall to win it all. Sorry, third favorite. In this game, they're laying two and a half. Trap, minus 135 on the money line. New Jersey, plus 115. 44 is the total. Philly, as Colby mentioned earlier in the show, can basically clinch here with a win. Uh, isn't that. So where are we at with the blob? Uh, blob, they're all right. Okay. Again, they. What do you mean there? There's multiple blobs, or is blob using they? <laughs> yeah, obviously. Okay. I, I don't want to assign a pronoun, but that guy's that guy's got they vibes written all over you, him. You don't strike me as a they guy. No, but blob is, and it's I like McCaffrey. Whatever, whatever he'd like to be called. You know? uh, I I hate the blob, but I'll I'll, I'll respect him. Okay. I, there there's a rumor, Colby, that Boston Scott could called be him up there. for this game. Is that true? Yeah, as Blob well, or as no, uh, no, uh, as a give, star? It, give those stars a little, uh, a little running back depth. I am worried about uh, Matt Colburn being out and Channing Stribling both out for the stars, and and the stars played really. I wouldn't say great, but they, man, they really blew an opportunity to steal a win there uh, against. That would have the clinched. Steins. They would have clinched had they won that. That was that. That's it, how close they, they were. seemingly yeah. own the generals. Again, the generals are just a broken shit franchise. Mm. <laughs> I mean, they really are. It's just a sad team. Uh, it, do we know if Kyle Laleda is starting again, Colby? I think it's Pro Cup that's starting because he played really well. Well, what, he reminded me, but that yeah, doesn't seem to impact the uh, the NJG's quarterback. Riley's so. not an output based uh, performance. He's driving me crazy. Like I like that what is team. This? That's a team that could win it all on their talent, but they're they, right. they they're just crazy. They're crazy the way that they they coach that team. So we're taking the two and a half. No, really? stars get in. I can't. Uh, Loletta might start. I can't take him. I, if he starts, he started the past what three weeks. I mean, this is stars all day. This is a bounce back spot. Again, we got the secret weapon, aka the most reliable thing in the USFL. Who's that, Sean? Aguilar. Blob? Oh. Aguilar, making making kicks, unlike Nelson Aguilar, another, dropping kids. You speak right? of the Aguilar, Sean? That's another thing. I really like. In a close game, you got to take the team with the best kicker in these spring leagues. Yeah, stars minus two true. and a half. Very all true. Day. Very true. Sean's really figured things I'm out. I'm on the stars. I, too. I'm dialed yeah. in. All right, so real I quick. I know you're shitting on me, but 22 and 10. What do you for mean? The, no, for you're the audience, you're right? amazing. Yeah, spring football level, amazing. Thank you. Maybe you'll make a practice squad. 95 percent of the money on the Maulers. 98 percent of the money on the Showboats. 80 percent on the Gamblers, and 98 percent on the Stars. Ooh. So. 
Uh, probably. Wait, what was that showboat? How much was it? Ninety-eight. Pro okay. Probably ninety-eight percent are on the stars. <laughs> probably was more. This two. No, no, no. Per, the showboats. Per, what was per it? DK. Showboats is ninety-eight. Wow. Stars is 90, ninety-eight as well. So I, uh, you know, it's it's early. Uh, th this is the that's the DraftKings split. Uh, you know, where all the squares like Sean plays. <laughs> I'm on the stars, Kramer. What are you doing? You're taking the generals plus oh, two and a half. Absolutely. I mean, if I'm gonna go three and one, and, and you're gonna get one one on me, Cra one. Colby, what are you doing? I feel like I haven't got a read from you. Stars. Oh, he I said he likes I, the stars. Like, there's, right, they should have won last he, week. That they're fine tuned right now. They're playing better than most of the league. Them and Birmingham really look like they're starting to separate. But I still think the South is a little tougher. But stars I remember take down the generals. Once I had a neighbor who was a she was really like a cheese. You see, you're on the stars. Wow, that's crazy. She she was she was really in a cheese. Or no, you're on the generals. You no, said. no, she's what? on the stars. You, guy's trying, you're trying to get him off. Mess with me. And, and she was really you know? in a cheese, and she brought this cheese over and threw it in the microwave, and the whole house smelled like fucking ass. That's that's, that's the smell of la 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 cheese. Mm. <laughs> right. I like that. That is like a that. disgusting it, 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 act. It, it was stuck to the walls for days. All right. Uh, time for the Edge Boost Double Down Play of the Day. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Edge. We're going to give out our lock and our dog. And then we're going to be joined by Noah B., uh, a.k.a. Noah Blutarski. Talk a little uh, college <laughs> baseball. Shout out to Jake and the uh, graphics team. Again, for the older heads who know Animal House, uh, we photoshopped <laughs> Noah's head onto Blue Tarski. It's it's really a pretty uh, sweet Photoshop. Kramer, how say you lock and dog? Uh, oof. I like how you're letting me go first. I do think I want chaos to happen this weekend. We're gonna mm -hmm. go breakers, lock, maulers, dog. Breakers, lock. I Mauler's like dog. Yeah, it's, I think I. I think that was the. That's the answer key this week. I think. I'm gonna go Birmingham Stallions because you guys are both on the Gamblers, and then how's that been working for you, Sean? Great, oh, twenty two okay. and ten ATS, and then for my uh, dog, I'll also join you on the Maulers. Hmm? Really? Yep. Get your stink off my um, dog. I look. I think Kramer. I know he's bashed this league. Uh, what do you mean? You know, I didn't bash it. I just said it isn't the best spring league. Oh, it is. Mm. Um, and personally, I have it's Colby, uh, but you do host the USFL and XFL show. You realize you're I'm saying. disparaging your own. But I know podcast. which one is better because I cover both intensely. Here's um, uh, football that I watch in the spring rankings: OTAs, What's XFL, that? CFL, USFL. Oh, I do love the CFL. If you're throwing the CFL there, but that's EFL. summer and winter. <laughs> Well, is it ELF? ELF. ELF. Yeah. How have we not called it ELF yet? All right, let's let's um, give your picks out. No, I think despite Ryan being completely wrong about football, and I've always questioned his football, his love for football. Yeah. Um, it's the Breakers and, and the uh, Breakers as the lock, the dog is the Maulers. Wow, yeah. you got it. oh, this is cute. Got <laughs> congratulations, Do we have guys. Just, just the two of us. Can we play that? <laughs> just the two of us. Thanks. Hey, we're going to talk a little college baseball before we do that. Of course, shout out to Underdog Fantasy. Have you got what are you doing if you haven't signed up with Underdog Fantasy? Kramer and I have been grinding away our best ball drafts. Man, um not only do they have the uh if you, if you're looking to get on some like fantasy contests again, best ball really is the most fun way to play fantasy football. Like I hate managing leagues. What's fun, right? Drafting players, underdog fantasy, best ball mania, giving away fifteen million dollars in prizes. That's insane. And if you go to underdogfantasy.com, use the promo code SGPN, hundred percent deposit bonus up to one hundred dollars. So deposit a hundred dollars, you get a hundred dollars in free play over at underdog fantasy, which essentially four free spins at best ball mania four for a chance to win your share of fifteen million dollars in prizes. Uh, NBA, NHL, daily MLB games. If you're if you're in a state where you can't play uh, player props, Underdog Fantasy is the way to go. UnderdogFantasy.com. Promo code SGPN. Joining us on the line, the host of the College Baseball Experience, Mister Noah Bienick. What's up, Noah? How's it going, guys? Thanks for having me on again. I'm ready yeah. to talk some college baseball. Yeah. I, gotta, to have you on. I, I do have to ask Noah a question. Sure. Noah, how do you pronounce your last name? Beanick. 
Okay. Beanick. Noah Beanick. Yeah. So Beanick, I Malcolm, threw in- Malcolm did the same thing. I, <laughs> I just don't correct people because I know that it's a, a very, very hard last name to yeah. pronounce. So growing up through school, I just learned just don't bother. Like I, I've, I've learned I got it now. Like, uh, I, I'll, I'll like associate bean. you with yeah. getting B. It's the insect B and the boy's name Nick. There you go. Noah oh, wow. B. Nick. Noah, uh, first off, we got to talk. That's like a rap thing. You might, have you been a rapper in the past? <laughs> Uh, no, okay. we, we got to talk. Uh, uh, we got to talk about, uh, we talked about Alabama and wake forest. They're playing in the super regionals. Is, is this where we're going to see uh, a number one seed go down and can we bet on Alabama yet? Where are we at with being able to bet on Alabama? There are a couple of specific books that you can bet on Alabama. Um, I've talked with some people that it's like state local books that you can try betting on them mm. uh everywhere i've looked i haven't been able to find it, any lines on it um not that you really maybe even want to because it's just going to be too uh too one-sided in this matchup for the betting odds I, I i would probably set wake forest to like minus 230 here um in the last two mm. seasons to answer your question this has been the spot where the number one overall seed was eliminated in 2021, Arkansas, they were the number one overall seed. They lost to NC State. And in 2022, Tennessee, they were the top dog, and Notre Dame turned them over. In both scenarios, the ACC defeated the SEC. And, well, I mean, if it just means more for one conference, you'd think oh, wow. they'd return serve here. You gotta, However, we gotta, I, yeah, we got to be go careful ahead. making jokes about Notre Dame turning things over. Uh, uh, yeah, whoa, I mean, pri- the private school kid. It's not. Yeah, it's a little hot. We gotta be careful. Though. Anyway, continue, <laughs> Noah. However, I I would, I, I think Bama got a little fortunate to get out of their regional. Uh, mm. In their second game against Troy, their in-state foe, the Crimson Tide, they were down to their final out. Troy was about to beat them. Alabama had a ground ball to the shortstop, who made a throwing error. Then Troy's right fielder dropped the fly ball. Then it allowed Alabama to build a lead, ultimately win against a team like Wake Forest. You're just not going to be able to get those second chances. Last weekend, the Deeks, they scored 16 runs per game, which is the most runs per game ever in an opening round. The Deeks beat their opponents by a combined score of 48 to 7 last weekend. So, it's just too much of an uphill battle for Alabama. I, I, I was in I was in on the Troy run because former Giants kicker Lawrence Tynes was a tr- is a Troy <laughs> man. So he was he was posting stuff. Well one rough w- out. One uh one uh controversial news story that was all over my Twitter feed was that the guys in Lexington, Kentucky, uh they had to they had to really they survived some brutal conditions and these college students had to stay <laughs> in dorm rooms. Now, now Kentucky Ooh. is squaring off against LSU. The fact that they don't have the home bed advantage here against LSU, <laughs> and both are are sleeping in comparable beds. How it, do you think they're going to show up against LSU? Do you and do you think it really mattered? My my uh, point was, hey, these are college kids. They're going to oh, show. Wait a second now. What? All right. You you. It clearly did matter. I don't think there's a debate. Well, they they won. Advanced. They did. Do you? I was going to ask Noah. Plus odds favor. I was right? gonna. <laughs> I was gonna ask Noah. Do you think sleeping in slightly larger? Uh, well, and there probably were Kentucky kids who were staying in the dorms, but sleeping in maybe their own <laughs> home dorm beds compared to the other dorm beds, the other players. Do you think that mattered in the results of that regional? You know, I have to debunk it. It's been a fun mm. ride with that story, but uh, West Virginia's star player JJ Weatherholt, in a press conference after they were eliminated, came out and said that they were very accommodating. A uh, very accommodating. He loved his time there. So, really, I don't well, that know. That just if means he fucked his student. He got right? laid. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my buddy, on. my buddy has a stand-up bit where he goes, <laughs> "Every guy just uh, rates his uh, tr- his vacation as whether or not he got laid." He's like, "How's Dayton, Ohio? It's amazing. <laughs> Great this time of year." So uh, maybe that was it. But a, again, it, to me, it was just hilarious. Uh, They're like, someone compared it to a penal colony. I'm like, yeah. dude, he's got a he's got a microwave fridge. Like, uh, I. 
It's Kentucky. <laughs> in fairness, I mean, it in was, one of the few in places. Fairness, they I'll say is a downgrade. Bones dorm rooms, like okay. everything, all the personalization from all the students that you no, ever see in a dorm room. So no lava gone. lamps. It was no like lava lamps. Cell. Yeah, no bongs. No, yeah. no like Jim no Beam TV. handle like, I wouldn't with be able to highlighter. A TV with highlighter. What were they allowed? Black lights at least. Noah? Wait. Were they allowed? Uh, black lights? I don't think they want that. <laughs> Did they have a? Yeah, food? They put turn that on. <laughs> was there a futon? And but we real quick. So we're not allowed to bet on Alabama be because we think that they're going to do it again. It's crazy. <laughs> they're, this remind, so Sean, I saw this. They on, just haven't figured out who's all involved yet. I, so they're just like, Hey, we're not going to bother. The board. It's yeah. too hot. So I saw this on Twitter, Sean, and it made me think of this. Uh, I think this is North Carolina. Uh, basically a uh, politician says gambling is predatory. Uh, quote, they will profit. We will not. Even with the increased tax revenue, gambling is a vice. It brings other cousins with it, brings loan sharking, prostitution. <laughs> and I put it right up there with cockfighting. Oh Whoa. Well, that is a lot. Well, of that leaps. makes me think but that he would be against the them. system working here because we've had many scandals over yeah, the years. They're catching people yeah, now. they actually caught them well, while the time that, was going on. That's what on. no one wants to talk about. They want to point out that look at these athletes are gambling. This is why gambling can't be legal. But it's like, hey, dummies, we're they're getting caught. They, <laughs> yes, they yeah. were getting caught before you idiots. Yeah, you find out like twenty years later. <laughs> they right? didn't just start gambling. Uh, I mean, if this Alabama, if this Alabama thing would it would have happened in an illegal state, he would have place that bet on a local uh, bookie yeah. and then he would have got the shit kicked out of him yeah, yeah. And, and like oh you're trying to rob me you motherfucker because the bookie would have probably figured out or just wouldn't have paid him a lot of those but local shops a lot of those local shops who aren't letting you bet 25 you got to go 50 so yeah he they they were very fortunate they were dealing with local regulated oh, uh, bookmakers so on any of the college experience feeds oh. we love the crime pace thing so we oh. would love to jump on Alabama but since we can't I think you got to look at Brett Favre, Southern Miss, sure. because if the money came in on the volleyball team, maybe it trickled over a little bit. Sean. Well, hold so on, Col Colby. We don't actually we don't view gambling as a crime, so I don't see anything that they've done that's that, paid in Alabama. That's that's true. So yeah. that but Just he, made a phone, he made a phone call to a friend. He had access yeah. to information. I he mean, made a phone call a, to is a, a Is it a crime <laughs> when a guy is a gambling model? What if his gambling huh, model right. includes personal information? If I yeah. get some inside Iggy on a, on a on a stock, and let's just say I, I let let someone that know. actually is a crime though. Right? Well, well, no, but, 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 uh, but Alabama, yeah. I was talking about the other crimes that occurred this season. Um, but uh, uh, so well, that coach yeah. is still around. Yeah, Not the college <laughs> baseball coach. They didn't fire him. No, he, he actually he actually got promoted. NATO, yeah. he's doing all right. All right, uh, mm, the let's, heat is in the hat. While, while we're while we're talking SEC, also Brandon Miller going to be the second pick. So I guess you know yeah. crime does pay. He's yeah. doing all right. Uh, well, if you, and if you guys heard about the Indiana State thing, oh no, have we dialed dialed into this? No, no, no. You should tell uh, him. Yes, yeah. oh, we okay. can hit it later. Yeah. No, I mean we can. Is it important to talk about right now? Well, they should Col be hosting. Oh, they boy. should be hosting. Yeah, they, walk they us won. What happened? They won uh, the, their regional, and then oh, that's where why, there's like a yeah, music well, festival. Why yes, are they not yes. hosting? No, no, that was last. That was oh. last week with Kentucky with Railbird. Uh, so, Indiana State they applied to host the regional round. Uh, they were a top sixteen seeds, so they got that. But they only applied to host the regional round. They didn't apply for the super regional because <laughs> they're hosting the 51st annual special Olympics of Indiana hosted in Terre Haute. So a lot of the hotels were booked up and the campus would be busy. And more importantly, they said that they would get short staffed for the super regional weekend. So in a turn of events, TCU is getting to host this weekend, but they were the two seed. So technically they're the lowest seed. The Sycamores will still serve as the home team for two of the three games. But uh, what Colby, I think wants to mention is like, Special shout out to the Lupton Drinking Club, which is like a huge TCU fan base. Uh, and Lupton is the name of their stadium. I think it's a podcast group as well. They came up with the idea to raise money for the Special Olympics of Indiana. And the last reports that I saw of it, it raised over $23,000 from the entire TCU fan base. So, oh, hell yeah. Wow. They're That's trying awesome. to buy a win. Yeah. I mean, it's hey, putting out some good juju. Can't blame the guys. So, do you think that's gonna? Do you think that's gonna help Indiana State? Obviously, or sorry, not Indiana State, TCU. Then, uh, getting getting the home field. Like, how much does home field matter in a super? Oh, it region? matters. It matters a ton. Uh, really? 
Yeah, it's these aren't MLB environments. I mean, did you see the Kentucky game? I mean, this this no, crowd is rocking. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I yeah, yeah, because it does seem like yeah, even it, even even for college baseball, like you get a thousand fans out, it, it does seem to have some impact. So the the stadiums are smaller and more compact too. So they're not built out like MLB mm-hmm. stadiums. They're just built around and they've so got right glass terms that everybody are able to uh, sit on. And Kentucky, they set. Uh, attendance records for their regional, but they only had 6,000 fans there, but they're loud as loud as hell. And S- still more uh, than the uh, Oakland A's. Oh, wow. <laughs> there, there you go. Still more <laughs> four, than the Oakland A's. Catch the so, uh, the Sycamores, they, they, their pitching staff has been incredible this year. Fourth in team ERA with a 368. It's in part to a tr- uh, finesse trio of starting pitchers and Matt Jacek, Connor Fenlong and Miller Lane and a Josh Hader like closer with a weird left-handed arm slot and long frizzy hair from Centerville, Michigan, Ooh. Jared Spencer. <laughs> but Indiana State, let me tell you, they will have their hands full with this TCU team. The Frogs scored 44 runs Damn. in their 3 games, averaging 14.6 runs a game. Throughout the weekend they only allowed 13 runs. So this team last weekend averaged more runs scored per game than their pitching staff gave up total throughout the entire weekend. So, so, so I think that like, TCU is very hot right now. Hot at the right time. Yeah. So, all right. So minus 200. I'm saying you can get uh, minus 200 for what it to, for them to win the super regional against mm. Indiana state. Okay. You got to jump. That's on. risen a bit too. Since Colby and I did our podcast like four hours ago. Oh, really? Wow. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's, let's, uh, let's talk Vols. They went 57 and nine. The bad boys, they're calling them of college baseball. Uh, 57 and 9 last year. D- yeah, 57 yeah. 9 last do, year. Do you know why they were called no, the bad boys? No. They talked a lot of shit. And I got, look, they were like the Ric Flairs of college baseball. <laughs> they they, uh, they would Just hit a home run. Him. They would hit a home run and put on a, put on a fur coat. <laughs> Dude, I, I will say if college baseball was smart. <clears throat> They would, because like the, they're catching all that news for that kid getting ejected because of like, well, fucking war a prop or whatever. Oh yeah, that was. Stupid. Uh, but if they wanted to really be smart and just completely undercut Major League Baseball, let all of that shit take place. Yeah. Oh. Well, I mean, it. it used to. They they actually the NCAA really didn't even know that they were doing this. Like honestly, that's how much they paid attention to this shit last year. Everybody was doing it, and then during the <laughs> regional round. Virginia Tech actually was the culprit. They bring out a sledgehammer for their home run celebration, <laughs> and they would jump. Yeah, and so so hit real the ground quick. with it, and they got caught and they got banned for it, and then that ruined it for everybody. So yeah, go, re- real quick, it was a prop where they uh, no. the player hit a home run. He's coming over to the dugout. Technically, the guy stepped out of the dugout and put the chain around yeah. him. Oh, you're and talking they, about this. This year, is yeah. for Indiana. Yeah. In Indiana, and they banned uh, or ridiculous. they ejected him for that NCAA game. Is just ridiculous. The, the second yeah. baseman who hit the, uh, uh, I don't know, like go ahead single or something like that. He was suspended well, for the next on. game. Yeah, yeah, Hire for someone. The next game's ridiculous. Insane. Absolutely just ridiculous. Give, ridiculous. Give him a warning and move <laughs> on no. with your life. The NCAA is literally going toe to toe with content companies. They need to hire someone that's like, <laughs> this is, this is good for content. This shit is exciting. People love it. Think like turnover chain. I yeah. Mean, yeah. It, it's, it's exciting. Yeah. It, it's like UNLV with the slot machine on the side. I could 100% the see baseball myself. Did it first. MLB is yeah. copying college baseball. What yeah. they all did with the home run celebration. I could now see now myself every MLB getting team in. has a home run. Yeah. Seattle with the trident. That's cool. Yeah. Like it's, it's just fun. I mean, come on. It sports is supposed Shut to be the big fun. trident guy. <laughs> I, have you seen, have you seen the trident? Right. Uh, you don't want to make fun of you, it, but you haven't, you don't want to hear Sean. copied. Uh, I believe it was Oakland who did it a couple of years ago. You don't want to <laughs> see Sean's uh, Little Mermaid takes; they're they're pretty hot. Too hot for yeah, TV. We won't we won't get there. So Noah Vols, do we like him against Southern Miss? What are we thinking? Mm-mm. So hmm. to start, they they completely retooled their offense this year. They lost the Black Eye Maniacs from last year that had all the attitude that Colby liked. They built Whoa, the character Black Eye Maniacs. Wait, hold on, this, explain uh, this. Why are they this is in a domestic the violence joke? Maniacs. Is it okay? I black. black. Okay. okay. Oh, so yeah. like Raider fans. <laughs> Drew Gilbert, Jordan Beck, even Trey Lipscomb, Jorel Atega, uh, Luke Lipsius, they're all gone. Like to some fans' surprise, due to those NCAA rules that we were talking about, this year's Tennessee's team, Tennessee team tried to 
disassociate themselves from last year's team. They cut back on the emotions that they were showing on the field. Boo. They stopped doing some of the celebrations from last Boo. year. Most of the nation's top pitching staff from a year ago came back for Tennessee, but they weren't living up to expectations. Chase Dolander, he entered the season as a hands-down top three draft pick for 2023. And his first nine starts as a Friday night starter, he just he was just four and five. Dolander had a 4.37 ERA, nothing close to his 2020 su- 2022 season 2.39 ERA. This team, they were lacking in identity. The season changed course when they played their in-state rival uh, Vanderbilt. The Vols walked off the Vandy boys in game one, and they kicked their ass in game two and game three. They swept Vanderbilt by a combined score of 31 to nine. And since that series with Vandy, Tennessee's 18 and five. They brought back their 2022 home run celebration, which was the fur coat and the hat that says daddy on it. <laughs> so it's great. Their it's vibe great. is Love all the way info. back from last yeah. year. As for the series with Southern Miss, and this is where Colby was going with the uh, whole crime pays thing and the uh, Brett Favre. At Southern Miss is hosting this. There was a whole, there was a lot of drama during the week about who gets the host. Play, play that X-Files uh, music. There's some conspiracies because someone on the board is from Southern Miss. So Hattiesburg hosting Southern Miss's former athletic director is on the NCAA selection committee. And also another person on the NCAA selection committee son is on the Southern Miss baseball. (laughs) I mean, you you can't get, you can't get mad at them. They're, they're good at getting shit done. I mean, Brett Favre, no. you know, knew enough to send a dick pic and get get some money funneled to uh, Southern Miss. He's, to get some he's shit had done. the weirdest collection of controversies, <laughs> Brett Favre. It really spans all different aspects. Uh, you know, I- I- improper use of funds, uh, sending your dick, uh, retiring all the time, and then not retiring. He's really painkillers. The yeah. addicted to painkillers. Yeah. <laughs> he keeps hawking the copper knee brace that's supposed to fix all your problems. Very uh, interesting post uh, playing career. Noah, is there so a the, sorry the yeah. Golden Eagles? No, I, I'm just gonna finish talking about this series because the Golden Eagles they're 26 and five at Pete Taylor Park, and that's why this was okay. very controversial because Tennessee's just five and twelve on the road. They're good. And that's at what home. we're talking yeah. about the their home and road splits. They mean a ton. And I think that the volunteers, they're walking into a hornet's nest this weekend as this fan base really wants head coach oh, Scott no. Barry to they, go out on a high no. note. Hattiesburg they want him and Omaha for one last time. Doesn't matter the sport. That town, it, it reminds me of ECU. They get lit for whatever sport they got. So that, that place is going to be rocking. Oh, yeah. Southern Miss is 10 and 3 with a Sun Belt tournament title since the day that Barry announced that he would be retiring at the end of the season. And in the regional in the past week, Southern Miss, they rolled through it and they faced each of the other three teams, aces, Sanford's Jacob Cravey. Then they saw the number one seed Auburn in the losers bracket. They lost the Cravey and Sanford. They only put up two runs total in that game, but then they go to losers bracket and they have to win four straight, which they did. They beat Auburn's best pitcher in Tommy Vale because they tried to throw off against Penn and they got burned uh, by the Ivy League, Ivy League's finest. And then uh, so Southern Miss beat Vale uh, and beat Vale, and then they faced Penn's ace and Ryan Drombrowski in the regional final, and they beat him. Plus, the last two national champions in college baseball have come from the state of Mississippi: 2021 at Mississippi State, 2022 Ole Miss. So you can just see the storybook ending happening here. <laughs> I think the Golden Eagles are destined for Omaha, Ooh. and the Vols are in a little bit of trouble. Plus one fifteen, game one, Sean. All right, and wh- how many? Uh, what's the series? series? Is three plus one forty. Yeah, three games. Three games. I like the series a little bit more than okay. the game. Plus one forty. Well, and especially three, and all all three games are at home. Plus one forty feels so like I, a great price. I got TCU queued up, and yes. I got Southern Miss queued. Yes. Up. What about a? What about a? Is there a college baseball Cinderella? Is there someone mm. we should be uh, latching on to here that uh, oh, could be love, on for a fun run? We, we love Oral in college, right? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, that, and Oral's back. Oral, oh, nice. Oral Roberts. They are the eighth. Uh, ever four seed to advance to the super regional round. Is, is Max um, Aismas on that team too? Oh yeah, <laughs> not quite. But they've got a guy in Jonah Cox that's their center fielder who's got Long an insane Cox. hit streak going on right now. 36, <laughs> 30, 36 game hit streak. And no, it's not ironic that a kid with the last name of Cox that's plays awesome. for a team with the name Oral. Long but, Cox. Yeah. Many people thought that this Oral Roberts team was underseeded; that they should have been a three seed instead of a four seed. Instead, they were. Wait, hold into on, Noah. How, who's many people? You. 
<laughs> no, I actually was a little bit of a doubter on oh. Oral Roberts because they played in the Summit League, and it was one of the worst conferences in college baseball this year. Oral Roberts stormed through the league, only lost one total game. It was a question of how good was this pitching staff. Well, the, and they're in Oklahoma. Mickey Mantle's from Oklahoma. Oh yeah. So you know he could throw. I mean? Hey, he could throw him back. Yeah, he he could throw him back Mickey under the bleachers throw, too, right? Mickey. Oh, the, I mean, just Google Mickey Mantle blowjob story. <laughs> oh yeah. And honestly, while you're at it, I just stumbled across a uh, four hundred seventy-five dollar tops mint condition card where Brett Favre is riding a lawnmower tra- tractor and wearing <laughs> oh, wow. a Packers helmet. We need. Well, let's just get that blown up as a photo <laughs> for our office because we need that. <laughs> All right, yeah. So we're betting on oral. Yes, in Eugene, plus one thirty. Yeah. All right, that's I got plus one thirty for the series. Let's just clarify, yeah, sorry. right? I series. Don't, yeah, I, I like the series and the game. Oh, is there if you had to pick one super regional matchup that you think is the best one? Which one of you? Which like if you let's say, say you only have one screen on God's eye and you got to put one game <laughs> on oh, one wow. bet? I mean, we we luckily have eight eight screens, which will all be college baseball nine nine. nine. Uh, and the teardrops ten. Well, and but, Colby's iPad. Yeah, iPad. Don't forget about. Yeah, we get yeah. the laptops. We Couple see of it computers. all. Computers. Yeah. What? What? Uh. What's your go-to super regional? Uh, for me, it would be the Gainesville Super Regional. Um, and it goes back to the weekend of April twenty-first when South Carolina they hosted Florida and they swept the Gators, winning all three games by an average of five runs, including one Mercy Rule victory. The Gamecocks entered the regional stage of the NCAA tournament winning just four of their last 15 games, averaging 3.73 runs a game during that span. South Carolina scored 41 total runs in their three regional games, averaging 13.7 runs in those contests. Last weekend as well, they gained Will Sanders from injury, and he appeared as a reliever. And with a power arm like that, who's not used to going deep into the games since he missed a month, I think that's a really good role for him. And he had eight strikeouts and just four innings of work, allowing one run. If Sanders can return to the ace that we thought he was in the preseason, uh, he can be a powerful, powerful weapon in the back end of the bullpen. As for Florida, they have a bunch of star power and a really good trio of starting pitchers in Brandon Sprout, Hurston Waldrip, and Jack Caglione. Cags is a two-way star, both hitting and pitching. He's tied for the country's lead in home runs. And this lineup also features four hitters with an average over 300 and OPS over 1000 and Wyatt Langford, a shoe in top three MLB draft pick. So oh. the Gators offense, they blasted seven total home runs in their five regional games, uh, totaling 14 of their 28 runs scored were via the long ball. So 50% of their runs scored via the long ball just scares me a little bit against a really good South Carolina pitching staff with the country's 14th best ERA at 417. I think the South Carolina team, they've already won three games against Florida. I think they've really woken up and they're another team that's getting hot at the right time. Florida's on upset alert here. Uh, and and that, that's bold of him because he is a Florida Gator fan. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Oh, what I, and that I, what a beautiful breakdown. Cause I, I, I got my screen up here and I'm just like making sure I got stuff in the card after Noah highlights it. And uh, he starts talking. I'm on South Carolina. And then he gets to the the, the the Florida points. I'm like, oh shit, maybe he's gonna pick Florida. <laughs> so I switch it over no, to Florida. That's, a, then that's he, how you, then know, you can trust back. the the Gamecocks. You know, chicks dig Which, the long ball, but not no, it's too un, too unreliable. Yeah. Chicks also ball. dig guys that can go deep into the depth chart of these college baseball. <laughs> teams. Right. I mean, you see what we picked up there. We gotta call uh, when we're talking college baseball. We gotta drop Skags. Yeah. Great two way player. They, then you just Cags. sound like. Kags. What is it? Kags. Kags. All right. Sorry. Skag sounds good. Say his full name. Skag, Skag sounds like a you know jazz piano player. That's but you're right. Say his full name. Kags. The no. the girls like CLV too and Kramer. <laughs> I, I got the South Carolina team to make it to Omaha at plus twelve fifty mm. in the preseason, and I also grabbed Florida at plus one hundred to get to Omaha. Oh, so you're prior you're, to the tournament. You're so beautiful. I'm I'm okay. I'm just watching this game for fun. Like this series say, for fun. Say Kags. Oh, wow. Look say, at this. What is Kags' full last name? It's Jeff. So his his full name is Jeffrey Allen Caglione. Oh, and he's a made guy. Can't fade yeah. this guy. Can't fade the Caglione family. <laughs> and this is he's a. He, I come well, to you on my do- <laughs> disrespect. His, 
His nickname forever. They, they've been bouncing around a couple of nicknames. Shout out to Ben Upton. Uh, the Sultan of Swamp. I really oh, like that it. one. So mm-hmm. it goes back to Babe Ruth. The Swamp. Can we, can we, I, get, I really a, like can we get a gator that's got like the Italian like hand? Like it's, the gator <laughs> hand is like up here like this. <laughs> uh. Capiche? <laughs> It's Cagliani, capiche? There's just, there's just horse heads all over the swamp. <laughs> all right, Noah, and of course, make sure you subscribe to the college baseball experience. Wait, and so hold on. Well, let me just. Uh, I want to. I'm, I'm setting up Noah oh, for okay. his lock, but what I was, well, I'm just reviewing cause okay, the game yes. tape because we've done a lot of discussing. So I have Southern Miss plus 140 to win the, the win the series, win the super regional. That, that's that's right. what all of these yeah. are. TCU minus 200. Yeah. Oral Roberts plus one thirty, and South Carolina plus one fifteen. Beautiful. That's what I got access to right now. So we're, I, I, there's no need for me to have any Kentucky LSU action. Action, or should I, should I pound LSU? LSU's my lock's gonna a parlay. All right. I, I know my, I know my. Uh, I don't want to step on it then. Give it, yeah, give it. Love, here. love, you're locking up a parlay. Let's hear it. Yeah. Let's go, Noah. What do you got? It is, uh, TCU game one. And LSU game one, uh, the parlay comes out to plus one thirty. Um, I just really like both matchups here because uh, in college baseball, some of the pitching matchups just aren't announced, and you can get some really good uh, again CLV when pitching matchups do get confirmed. Um, in the TCU game, Indiana State's ace has not had the best stretch of starts here. In his last four starts, he has a 7.24 ERA. He's going up against a very, very hot TCU offense. And Cole Klecker is TCU's uh, starting pitcher for game one, I believe. He started last Friday, so they'd fall right in line. He is 9-4 and four on the year with 60 strikeouts, 27 walks, 4.18 ERA. And then you're also adding in LSU as a leg here because they have the best pitcher in the country in Paul Skeens. He has 179 strikeouts in 99 innings and a 190 Jesus. ERA on the year. And in his last five starts, he's a 079 ERA. So, so that's o- the parlay. Only like a third of his outs have not been strikeouts. That's that's an insane. <laughs> that, that's set. that's absolutely wild. Well, uh, yeah. Oh, I was gonna. I didn't hear. We we haven't. Um, just want to make sure we're not missing anything with the Stanford Texas matchup. <laughs> Passing on that one. What do you got for that? So, Noah? There was a little bit of controversy during our podcast. Uh, oh, no. Colby and I had gone seven for seven picking the same game, so we have officially split wow. that game. I'm going. It's strength versus strength, and these two teams are very. Oh, so uh, it sounds like I can pass. No, I don't need a pick. We don't need to pick yeah. them all. All the right, we'll road to one. Omaha goes right through both of these teams every year. Stanford's looking for their 19th uh, Omaha appearance, Gross. which would be tied for seventh most, and Texas going for their 39th, which would be Can't get the most that. by 14 appearances. Can't, Roger Clemens went to Texas. Can't get behind either of that. Oh man, Roger he, Clemens, straight shooter, character, like real yeah. character. Noah, appreciate you calling into the show. Uh, Thanks for but, having me. Yeah, make sure you follow Noah B Nick. Uh, at 70, <laughs> spell it out. 70, seven. So it's the word 70, the number seven, <laughs> number NB. seven NB. Very easy. And then uh, the college <laughs> baseball experience, Apple podcast, Spotify. You got to check out his amazing Twitter profile. Uh, just, uh, just very massive baseball vibes. And uh, yeah, you're going to be just giving out a ton of college baseball picks. Noah really grinds it hard. He, he does a good job of regardless of when these bastards give out the lines, Noah is there getting you ready for the college baseball world. And, and worth, if you're not watching youtube.com slash sports gambling podcast, Noah is a young person who has a notebook with mm. a pen uses his hands. And uh, these are artisanal fucking picks. yes. Also, we got the picks page on the website, uh, in the app, SGPN app. Download that. Uh, Richard Kersberger asking, does anyone on the planet post over unders for college baseball? I know Noah gets some total plays as well, so make sure yeah. you follow him. Check He'll out the post pod. Usually the day before or the day of, and I'll get him out there. Just not for Alabama because <laughs> they're gonna cheat again. Yeah, nothing. Well, else. There's no- <laughs> if anything, we figured out who the rotten apple was on the Alabama team. You got to worry about everyone else. Nah, it's just like keeping those Rutgers games off the board in Jersey. 
<laughs> Doing the Lord's work. Not in my state. Wade Boggs Stop. went to South Carolina. Hammer that. Oh wow. <laughs> uh, a pos- is that a positive or a negative? Positive. <laughs> Smash the subscribe button. Uh, check us out youtubecom <clears throat> sports game podcast live Sunday to Thursday, 8:30 p.m. Pacific. Uh, toss us a nice rating review. Apple Podcast, Spotify. Always uh, giving away gift cards, hooking up the listeners. Thank you for participating in the sports game podcast. For the sports game podcast, I'm Sean. Second the money green, and he is Ryan. Fur coat and a daddy hat, huh? <laughs> Kramer, let it ride.